Hi, my name is Gabriel Roman, and I'm a mechanical engineering student at the University of Florida. For this summer, I decided to do the SRAW program at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor under the mentorship of Dr. Kuo in the Human Biomechanics and Control Lab. Now, before I get into the specifics of my project, I would like to talk more about why I decided to do this program. So as a rising student, I had no idea what I wanted to do in the future. So last semester, I got an internship with a huge company, General Electric, and this this summer, I decided to do the Summer Research Opportunity Program at a well-known school. Now, SROP has answered questions such as, where do I get funding for grad school? And should I do a master's or a doctor's program? Now, when I went into the industry doing an internship, I got to, know, I got to see how, how life works around you know, a desk job and how it is to go every day and basically know what you're going to do every day. So I also wanted to know what, what would happen if I went to graduate school. Now, in graduate school, it, it's a lot more individual planning and a lot more individual work, but you also get to work in a, in a faculty's lab where you grow your own relationship, and it's like a family. Just in two months, we grew, my lab grew really close together, and we got to do activities such as picnics, dinners, and just go see the city. Doing this program, I got to enjoy the summer with grad students, and I got a little hint of how grad life is. OK, now to the specifics of my project. So what I did this summer was determination of preferred step frequency of human gait. Basically, the overview of my project is that humans walk to a certain step length and step frequency. Why we do this is believed to be because we internally walk at the most efficient way possible. My summer research project was to collect data from several subjects and prove this hypothesis. Because I am a mechanical engineering student, there was a lot of background needed in order to understand the biology and the biomechanics in human walking. Human walking has two main components. The first is shown here. As humans take strides, the first is shown in the first picture. As humans take strides, they move their center of mass by an inverted pendulum as, as shown. Between each step, the center of mass is redirected, resulting in the expenditure of energy. What this means is that the longer the step or the shorter the step frequency, the more the center of mass velocity increases in magnitude, which results in more energy being used. We can see that by looking at the second picture, it clearly illustrates that for longer step lengths, the more push-off work is needed. The other component of walking, which isn't shown here, is the movement of your legs. So based on this first concept, based solely on this first concept, the most efficient way to walk would be to take short, quick steps. Now, the second component of walking is moving your legs back and forth. So if so by moving at these short, quick steps, you use more kinetic energy. This is because the faster you move your legs, the more kinetic energy your body uses. This first graph illustrates a prediction of both components of walking. You can see this green line shows that the energy being redirected from the center of mass velocity. So basically, the faster the step frequency, or the faster or the longer you move your legs, the more energy which is shown in the first half. So the shorter your steps, the more energy you use by redirecting the center of mass. And the faster your steps, the more energy you use by using kinetic energy. So basically, we predicted that the graph would be some parabolic relationship and that the most efficient point would be right at the center. Now, before we explain the second one, we explain the methods and the, and the materials used. Because every human has different foot lengths, we needed a way to control the roll, the roll step of each walking subject. When a human walks, they roll their feet, but of course, it depends on the size of their foot. The method we came up with was to use these arc feet, which is shown here, with different rolling radiuses, which is shown here, which is attached to the bottom of the arc feet. And these boots basically lock your ankle and make you roll with the platform that is attached. This way, everyone is on a level field and rolling with the same radius. Going back to the previous graph, we, see, we predict that with increasing arc radius, right here, with increasing arc radius, your step frequency will diminish. Well, during this experiment, we used five different radiuses. We used five centimeters, 10 centimeters, 15, 22.5, and 30. So this is simply because with larger radiuses, we predict that your foot will take longer time to roll, to completely use the roll step, and you will cover more area with a larger radius. Our other equipment that was used was the Bertek treadmill, which is shown here under this subject. And the, what the Bertek treadmill does is that it has force plates. It, you can barely see them here, but there's a left and a right 
and they each have separate force plates on the bottom. And what it does is it calculates the force from each step. And from that, we can calculate energy based on the forces. Another, uh, another material also used was the Oxycon mobile system, which is shown here on the subject. It's attached to, it's a, it's a mask, which is attached to her head. And what this does is that it calculates the oxygen intake versus carbon dioxide exhale, which calculates the energy used at each step. So here are our results. As you can see from our results, our predictions were, were backed up. Basically here you see the parabolic, the, the best fit curve that we have here on the blue is the parabolic which we predicted, and here is the actual data from the subject. So what this is showing is basically we let the subject walk for about five minutes and calculated the step frequency at which they, they wanted to walk with. After that we selected two higher and two lower step frequencies and we graphed each based on the energy they used. And as shown here, the faster they move, the more energy they use, which is due to kinetic energy. And the slower they move, the more energy they use, which is due to the redirecting the center of mass velocity. We also found, you can also see that our arc radius versus step frequency relationship was the same, or was, was the same as our prediction, because as we increased the arc radius, the step frequency dramatically decreased. Now, why do we go through this trouble in learning more about walking? Well, this shows that humans internally recognize the most efficient ways in which they can perform. This can be used with different conditions, such as temperatures and wind factors, to see the many ways in which humans change their movement to become more efficient. This can also be used in sports to determine why athletes are so efficient in the sports they play. This is what I did in, during my summer, and I hope this was informative and hope that you have learned something from this. If there are any questions, please email me and I will be sure to get back to you. Thank you.